Good morning and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Ilona and I'm an online coach, a personal trainer, a bodybuilder and we are here today to react to Life by Jen's latest weigh-in video. Now before we get this started I just wanted to say that everybody has the capacity, well pretty much everybody, pretty much everybody has the capacity to lose weight and to become a healthier individual a lot of it is down to mindset and uh, just pushing through when things get tough so for example much of it is creating habits and for the habits to just become norm so i am having a rest day today because the training i'm doing at the moment is very intense if you want to follow that um, i do vlogs whenever i'm training so you can see what I'm doing training wise if that interests you but besides the but besides that point even though it's my rest day I am still going to go into the gym today to do some very gentle cardio purely because if I don't I will sit at home all day long um, I have work to do I have editing to do which is fine so I'm not going to sit at home and do nothing but for me to just literally sit at home all day and not get out and do nothing and not move it just it makes me feel almost anxious if that makes sense not because what I'm gonna do is just walking on the Stairmaster and um, walking on a treadmill I mean I'm not gonna burn a lot of calories I'm not gonna walk fast but I just want to get those steps in because my body just gets tight if I sit around doing nothing all day long and I get very bored so Granted, it's not for everyone or not everybody is in a position to do so, but I think because it's been a habit of mine to go training pretty much every single day, unless I'm really, really tired or I'm sick, I kind of, like my day feels incomplete without it. Having said that, um, let's get into this React. Let me make the screen larger here. I have put her on 1.25 speed simply because she talks quite slow um, there's nothing good that's not a negative or a positive that's just a statement so I've just made her a little bit faster and uh, yeah let's get going I hope she's doing well I hope she's lost more weight by the way Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome to you as well. My name is Jennifer and this is my channel. I know that there are a lot of new people so thank you for jumping on and joining me on this journey. I appreciate it and for you guys who have been with me the entire time or at any point in the past couple of years, I appreciate your support as well. So where have I been? I know a lot of people are expecting me to say that I've done poorly or I'm off track or I've regained. Um, I've read a few comments as such. I haven't been on YouTube hardly at all in the past week. I have been very busy. I think I've watched maybe two or three videos and I hadn't read any comments at all until last night, late last night, early this morning. Um, it's just been a very busy week. A lot has happened. Um, first of all, I want to say I am so sorry and put this apology out there to Keto Diamond. I had agreed with her that I would do daily uploads and daily check-ins with my weight and I did not do that and I apologize to you Keto Diamond. So I don't know what arrangements she's had um, but personally I disagree with daily weighings. Um, I don't think that is beneficial. I think weighing yourself daily is quite disturbed behavior and um, I think it can put you into a really bad mindset if the scale is not going the way it should. It can do that anyway, but I think when you're doing it daily, the chances of there being a, a variation because of whatever, like if I sleep bad, I hold water, I gain weight. Like I don't need that in my life, you know? So it might be different for her because she is morbidly obese, but still, even I wouldn't recommend somebody that's morbidly obese to weigh themselves every day. As long as they are 100% on track with their food and their training, if there is any training or any exercise as long as they're meeting those goals and they're sticking to what i've recommended them then i know for a fact that any any uh, fluctuations that there are it's not gonna be because they're eating something they shouldn't it could just be hormonal lack of sleep just i don't know but the body does strange things weight loss is never really linear if your weight loss is linear you're very lucky and 
I am very sorry. She is a very sweet lady and she has checked in on me several times to make sure I was okay. I am doing good. I've just been super busy. I know she filled me in on her and Amy as well from Amy's Life's Journey. We chatted last night actually and I've heard that there are like rumors going around that I had kidney failure or I was in the hospital. I have not been in the hospital. I've not been sick. I've been actually doing very well. Um, just very, very busy. But to Keto Diamond, I am so sorry that I let you down on our collab. I think this is showing me that I'm probably not ready for a collab, although I do want to continue working with Keto Diamond. And she is an amazing encouragement and an amazing, amazing supporter. I can want to continue with her being my check-in partner, even if I don't upload every single day. I still want to, and I haven't even run this by her yet, but at least send her a video um, through private message of my way in to be accountable to, at least to her that I know that I can at least do that every day even if I don't have time to sit down and upload a video for everybody although I I think you know setting the goal of I mean weigh yourself every day if that's the arrangement they want to get to that's fine um, you know I think this is something that she needs to do for her and for nobody else so if it becomes too overwhelming because she's having to hold too many people responsible or keep too many people in the loop and it becomes too taxing with videos and stuff then I, I don't think she should you know people might say like oh you're giving up but it, it is it is giving up but at the same time the most important thing here is for Jen to lose weight right and if she needs to go around it in a certain way by not doing videos every day by not checking in with certain people and just focusing on her for now and then maybe do that in the future or not i don't know that's up to her but i think that it's good to have somebody to hold you accountable sort of like once a week or a couple of times a week but to do a video every day i think that is in my opinion quite unnecessary but then again i suppose don't say that you're going to do that i can't remember from the last video if she said or not that she was going to do that but if she did say that then maybe don't put that out in the universe that you're going to do that and then not follow up with it because then it just looks bad on you just say maybe i might do but we'll see we'll still be here on wednesday no matter what else the week holds i will still continue doing my wednesday weigh-ins as i committed to hopefully after the last of the month, things will, um, hopefully now things are going to start to get a little bit calmer. I can't really go into a lot of detail about what's been going on. Go um, it involves the volunteer position that I accepted. It was supposed to be going really well and then things happened and it wasn't going well. And now we're trying to figure out how to make it go well again and how to get things back on track. And there's just a lot of details that I can't go into, but it's all been good. I've been very active. Um, so let me just tell you, let's just start with how I've been doing. Let's just start there. I have been getting a lot more movement in. I have been walking a lot further distances without having to sit down. It's not as much as I should be, have been doing. As I said, I've been preoccupied with other things. And that is one of the things that I found out over this last week that I need to focus on myself and less on other things. Volunteering is good, but getting overly involved is not good because I lose focus on myself. Jean and I even discussed this as a couple. Did she say volunteering? I suppose that is good. It's a good reason to get out of the house and be around other people. So you're working, you're busy. So, but at the same time, it is volunteering, so it shouldn't. It should be when it's suitable to you, I suppose. But then again, if you're agreeing with somebody, I'm going to do it on the, all of these days, and then you're breaking the agreement. That is a little bit annoying. So I can see it from both sides. We need to focus on our lives and not so much the outside activities and get our lives on track and get our futures set so we can move forward and do the things that we have wanted to do and we have set out to make goals to do those things. Um, so like I said, my movement has been getting better. He's been encouraging me every day to walk and he's been a great help. Like I said, he, I have a clip of me walking so I'll insert that somewhere over here so you guys can see me walking um, for this week's dose of my activity. I haven't been doing any other sort of activity except for walking, but like I said, he does encourage me often to walk. Yesterday I walked from my door to the elevator th three times, and I didn't video all three of them, of course. So I think that's very good, especially if she has like a railing there so she can hold on to something. Um, her walking does seem compromised. I don't know if she's got like a hip problem or a knee problem, but it does seem like that. I think that's good. I think if she has something that she can hold herself onto um, so she can walk back and forth and it's something like a goal like the elevator is do that say three times a day then increase that to five times a day and maybe then go 
you know, three times a day, back and forth, back and forth, forth and back. That's the way, yeah. Forth and back, forth and back. You know, and that way increase the stamina and then, you know, gradually build up to something, um, gradually build up to maybe like an outside walk for like 20 minutes, which is a lot. I get that. And she probably won't be there instantly but she can work up to that eventually within the next few months because the human body is quite astounding um, you lose i think if you do like strength training i think you lose like about 10 percent of your strength in a week if you stop training i'll see if i can find the stats i remember learning about this in my course it's like a really phenomenal amount but at the same time there is such thing as muscle memory and the second you get back into training or the second you get back fitter or you get the body used to moving again will remember um th those things and you know the the neuro the, mo the motor neural pathways they will re-establish um the muscles will start firing up and you will just become fitter quite quickly uh, as long as you keep it up so i think that's where mindset and uh, discipline comes in it's it's well and good to do this and i think it's great just keep doing it and keep setting goals and pushing those goals just a little bit further so there is continuous improvement. But I have a video of this one so you can see my little trip there and back. Um, it's getting a lot easier. I find that my breathing is not as labored as I keep doing it. And I can't tell you that it was, it's been every single day, but it's been more days than not. And my legs are hurting. My, the tops of my legs, like my thigh area, um, from my hips to my knees, they, they start to burn and ache because I'm using those muscles, I guess, and rebuilding them. Um, but that's a good thing. Yep. And I feel better when I get up and move. And I feel more energized and more like doing it again and again and again instead of just sitting and staying complacent and lazy and like I have no energy. So that is my movement there. I think it's going to be on this side, hopefully, um, for the week. That is what I've been doing for movement. Everything is going good with that. And I'm going to start this week pushing harder and walking more. And I think, uh, just as a recommendation, I think what is probably quite beneficial for her and a lot of obese people is to strengthen their lower back and um, strengthen sort of like their pelvic area. So you can strengthen like your pelvic area by doing, um, you don't even have to do full bridges, it's just laying on your back and just rotating the pelvis up and under. But when you rotate it under where you're pushing your lower back into the floor, you inhale and you squeeze. Sorry, I'm so excited. I look like I'm about to shit myself. <laughs> but I'm just trying to do the exercise. So you exhale and you roll out. So you create a little bit of an arch. You inhale and you squeeze in through the inner abdomen, like through the transverse abdomini, which are the, the abs that sit near the spine. And you basically want to get those strong. So if you suffer a lot of, from lower back pain, which I do, so I've been doing a lot more planking and a lot more sort of pelvic floor exercises to get that part of my body strong. And this is exercises that she could do already without, I mean, she could, might not be able to do full bridges and she could start off with maybe doing um, like knee planks and just strengthen her core that way. Even if it's just for five seconds, just literally come onto her knees, place herself almost onto, not all fours, but like, you know, like, like a knee push up, but a knee plank, that form and just hold that. Just hold that static movement, that isometric move it, movement for maybe 10 seconds, five seconds, a few times a day. That, that will again strengthen the transverse abdomen, making her lower back smaller. And I'm pretty sure that her as well as many obese people will have lumbar problems just simply from all that weight compressing down onto it. I'm gonna try to stay accountable. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do a clip every day of me walking, but I will tell you next week I'm gonna make... I. If this video, by the way, is seems like it's been cut a lot, it's because I've literally just drank a coffee and I might be talking shit. So yeah, bear with me. I might just edit it and go like, I'm talking just far too much here. I do have a propensity to talking a lot of shit. Welcome to my channel. I'm planning on making like a little chart and showing you, or at least for my own self, of the days I exercise, how much I've exercised, how many walks I've taken, the steps I've taken, and I'll present that all to you. Hopefully next week, I cannot promise, I but like I am that. working towards doing that, including that in my videos. So my food has been pretty good. I really think she should set herself a goal and have that progress every week, every day, even if it's just the tiniest goal, because A, it will keep her motivated, and B, it will force this habit where she goes like, all right, today I said I'm gonna do like 
a thousand steps. It sounds like nothing. It maybe is a lot to her. I don't know. I just pl pluck the number out of the air, right? Even if she says, all right, today I'm going to do a thousand. Tomorrow I'm going to do 1100. The day after that, I'm going to do 1200. You know, and just do it like that. I think that would be massively beneficial rather than, oh, I'm going to try and see. It's like, no, just do it. Just set yourself a goal. Do it. And that way you'll hold yourself accountable. You have something to strive towards and you can measure your progress that you've done over the last few weeks, months, days, whatever. You can look back at it and go like, oh, I started off at doing a thousand steps a day and two months later I can do 3,000 a day. And that's like a measurable, you can measure, like it's a true measurable objective and that's quite important because having goals and objectives is important. But if you don't, if you can't measure them, then how do you know whether you've succeeded or not? You know, you can't just go how you feel. You have to, it has to be something that you can physically see that has improved because otherwise the, you're not going to feel content and you're not going to feel like as a person we want to achieve and we want to do well so if you haven't got that recognition of like oh yeah I've definitely improved here then it becomes like a pointless endeavor I think subconsciously I could be wrong here but I'm pretty sure that's like how the human psyche works I think you should just measure um, her workout I haven't been tracking my calories most days which I should and I'm going to start again today doing that um, I've been focusing on trying to just eat the low carb, no carb foods and kind of not worrying about the macros right now. But I do need to keep an eye on the calories to make sure that I'm not getting too many calories. But how that's concerning because she's saying she's putting herself on a keto diet. How do you know you're eating keto if you're not tracking the macros? Unless she's literally just eating meat. But even if you're eating meat, meat and vegetables on keto, not on low carb, but on keto, there's a lot of vegetables you can't eat because they have too much uh, sugar in them. So. There's a lot of food you can't eat on keto, unless she's doing like dirty keto, and that's not how you should do keto. If you're gonna do keto, you have to eat healthy, healthy fats, lean proteins, maybe like some oily fish or steak or something like that, but you can't just wing it, uh, unless you're like very proficient and you understand the foods and the, micro, the macronutrient profiles properly of foods, but if you don't, you can't wing it, especially not on a weight loss journey. ...while I'm staying full. Um, one good thing that I've noticed so far about being on low carb keto, I'm not in ketosis yet, and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, one good thing is when you take out all those carbs, I'm not as hungry anymore, and I can go. All right, so that's an oxymoron. You can't be low carb keto. You're either low carb or you're keto. Keto is zero carbohydrates or 30 grams, or maybe a little bit more if you're like a very big person or you have like a very fast metabolism, but you're either low carb. So I'm at the moment, I do low carb, which means I eat anywhere between 80 to 120 grams of carbohydrates a day, which for me at five foot seven, five foot eight, I weigh about 80 kilos. What is that? 175 pounds, something like that. I'm pretty lean. I kind of have abs. That's very low carb. I train one and a half to two hours every day. I do cardio. I'm a very active person. So for me, to eat that little carbohydrates is a low carb. For me to go into keto is, I have to be under 50 grams or less. So you're either low carb or you're in keto. It's not both. You're keto or low carb. It's not both. You're eating carbs or you're not eating carbs. It's really quite that simple because even the carbs that you get when you're doing keto, it is like a byproduct of say nuts and seeds um, because otherwise you're, you're on your daily limit, like just like that eight, 10 hours in between meals and not feel hungry. So that's definitely a big perk in this whole keto low carb lifestyle that I've been experiencing and that I experienced before as well. Um, so there was one day last week that I ordered pizza, just being transparent with you guys and honest. I I know that sometimes I've used that um, this journey is not perfect. As I think that's like, I mean, we're like two weeks into a journey I, I think if you're gonna be inclined on doing something in a certain way and you feel like you can't be without it, then allocate out a day where you allow yourself a certain meal rather than just keep giving in, right? So then at least you can like allow yourself a cheat day or a cheat, not a cheat day, because then you can really overeat. Allow yourself a cheat meal so that that way you can kind of be on track a whole week and then have one day or one meal to look forward to to reward yourself 
but to but then also when it gets hard during the week at least you know like all right i can go two or three more days because then i can have what i want on that day and it should just be one meal and you should try and like not eat more more calories throughout that day unless no you shouldn't like you should just kind of eat the same amount of calories unless you're in like a severe caloric deficit but i don't think she's going to have a problem i don't think like usually that is more like from a bodybuilding perspective that your metabolism is slowing down because you're so low in body fat that you need to eat like a cheap meal or something dirty just to boost it but that is literally one meal and it's only in certain circumstances there's plenty of people that do it and they are constantly in a caloric deficit and they don't do cheap meals so it kind of depends on the individual i don't even know what she was saying sorry welcome to my brain I think a lot, I talk a lot. So if you're new to my channel, hi. You might not like this. <laughs> it's an excuse to do bad, but there was no excuse. I was under a lot of stress and a lot of pressure and I ate pizza because it felt good, it felt comforting. I was tired at the end of the day. I didn't want to prepare anything and it was just convenient. So no excuses, I did it. I'm being honest with you guys about it. So that's like to me non-excuse. I sometimes get like that as well. Everybody gets tired, but if she lives in a big city and you can get takeout, if I'm like that, if I don't feel like cooking, but I want to get takeout, I always get just like grilled chicken, like peri peri chicken. I get grilled chicken and salad. You can have healthy takeout. It is possible. Obviously, a grilled chicken or like half a grilled chicken is not going to be as healthy as like your own home cooked chicken breast. But it's still better than a pizza. You're talking maybe like six, seven hundred calories compared to two and a half thousand. Plus, you get your proteins, plus you get your animal fats. It's it's fine compared to other takeouts. But I'm not saying eat like that every day. I'm just saying if you're gonna have a takeaway, you wanna have a healthy takeaway, that is an option. And just throwing it out there so you guys know, I will tell you when I do bad and when I do good. But on the good side, on the flip side of that, we did make a breakfast. It was supposed to be a breakfast brunch dish, but it got pushed back because other things happened and we were busy. Um, it got pushed back to dinner, but it was still delicious. I'm gonna insert some photos over here from my new keto cookbook that Jean got me for Christmas and it was really good it was called the feta brunch bake and it had feta spinach roasted red peppers eggs of course onion it was very very good and i'm going to leave the recipe in the description below and it, like i said, said before if the link or if the, it isn't my, what i say in the description if i don't add it please leave a comment and remind me that it's not there so i can fix it because sometimes i forget when i'm uploading to do that um so the pictures are in here you'll be seeing those and that was delicious we had that for two days meals and it was very good i had mine with some roasted chicken so before i insert the way in i'm going to remind you where i started and where i was last week on january the 1st 2020 i weighed in at 553.4 pounds and last week on week one i weighed in at 539.4 which was a 14 pound loss so let's get on to the week two weigh in and i'll insert that clip here Hello. So as you can see this week I weighed in at 532.6 which is a 6.8 pound loss from last week and an overall of 20.8 pounds lost for the month. I'm very proud of myself. Um, Good. Like I said, if I hadn't done the pizza, I'm sure it would have been more. I'm going to push this week with more movement and doing better with my food. Hopefully next week I'll be back into the double digits and all is good because 20 pounds in two weeks is, I feel, is amazing. I'm sure that I could have done better. I'm positive I could have done worse, but I'm happy with it. I'm moving in the right direction and that's all, I'll, that's all I can ask for. As long as the scale's going down, I'm good with that. I'm doing what I need to do. And there's always room for improvements, and I'm going to work on improving what needs improved. So let's get on to our cookie jar. Cookie jar is still in effect. We still have the. So I'm going to stop it there. I'm done. I'm not the not too so bothered about the cookie jar thing. Um, I think that is a good incentive. Don't get me wrong. I'm just not bothered about seeing it. Um, I just kind of want to see the way in and what she's been up to this week. Did I not say last week? that her weight loss this week is not going to be as much as it was the week before because it never is so in keto if you do full keto for a week if you've been eating high carb or normal carbs you will lose a lot of water very quickly because the glycogen 
So the glycogen cells are filled with water. They just expel all of that. Um, and that's just water coming out of the body. So I did expect the weight loss to be less this week. I said around like 10 pounds, I think. I'm pretty sure I said. So yeah, kind of expected six pounds. It's okay. But that pizza would have definitely made a difference. I think she's moving in the right direction, but I do think she she needs to learn to set herself goals rather than just, I'm going to aim for better, I'm going to try. I find those words are, they're quite almost defeatist. It's not saying like, I will, I can, I am. It's maybe, you know, maybe, we'll see. It's like, no, you have to be very much like, I'm going to do this and this is gonna happen. So that's why I'm saying in terms of like setting goals and stuff, I think she would benefit benefit from that. Set herself exercise goals. Maybe she should definitely start, start tracking her meals. You cannot, as, a, as an obese person or even as a non-obese person, unless you really understand macros, unless you've been weighing out your food for years and years and years, you can't scaleize things. Because the reason you're overweight is not because, partially because you have no idea of portion control, but, and also partially addiction to food, I get it. You can still be, I mean, it is difficult to be overweight and like just get overweight from eating healthy food. That is like, how much broccoli and chicken can you eat really? Like, that's not me being a dick, but that's the, the reality of it, right? Like there's only so much healthy food you can eat. And trust me, when I set people on the new plans and it's a healthy eating plan, I usually put them on lower calories than they need to be at because I know they're gonna struggle eating that amount of food when they get started. And then we up the calories after a few weeks. Shame the self plug. If you want me to help you, I am available still. <laughs> but um, yeah, on that note, I need to get ed get this edited and uh, get my ass to the gym because I'm very stiff. I need to get food shopping. And um, yeah, I probably will film another video. I think I'm going to do some Amy's live duty next. Nobody else seems to have uploaded, but I'm I'm going to download a few of her videos, her latest ones, and sort of like cobble them together and maybe do like a. Um, a cobbled up so not a raw react like i've just done here but sort of review the last few videos take from it what i find interesting and react to that anyway guys on that note uh, thank you so much for watching comment like subscribe if you want to if not that's fine as well and i'll see you in the next one ciao